Future Proof is sponsored by Concordia Dental Healthcare. Expert care you can trust. Hello and welcome to Future Proof. Um, as you're watching Sarah Hopwood launching this second series, series two of the business television program that looks at the power of emotional intelligence and indeed other things, other gems that can help us future proof looking forward. And uh, that includes um, advice and uh, discussions for business owners, for employees, and of course, students who are preparing to leave school and uh, many are unsure about the world that lays ahead for them. I know a number of my colleagues, business, business owners and uh, partners and directors who have been invited into education to talk to students and the biggest question that students have is what job is going to be out there for me when I leave school. So the whole purpose of this program is to inspire hope and uh, go back a few months I actually did an exercise it was a workshop to find out what my two words were which would sum up my core purpose um, you could say my role on this planet and many of us that's a burning question why am I here and the two words that came up for me were championing hope and I really really hope that series one has gone some way to doing that and that I continue with that work moving forwards and why do I do it because um, hope was something that I lacked many years ago as I was entering the business world, as I was leaving school. And uh, I basically don't want people to feel what I felt when I left education. So in this first programme, I want to look at um, an electronic diagnostic. And I have thought before about saying, email me, ask me for it, I will send it to you. But actually what I've done is I've uploaded it onto my website. So on the front page of my website, on the left-hand side as you're looking at it, you will, no, on the right-hand side as you're looking at it, you will see um, information around um, my television programmes and you will then also see um, the, the word EQ diagnostic. Um, EQ, emotional quotient. The word quotient means to measure. Many of you have heard of IQ, which is intellectual quotient, so it's just the same thing. There's now MQ, moral quotient, SQ, spiritual quotient. And uh, so I like EQ, I like the word quotient, but many people know this is emotional intelligence, and some people call it EI, which is obviously absolutely fine. But you can download this diagnostic yourselves. As soon as you click on the link, it will automatically download. And then it's a, a question um, an answer platform. There's no right or wrong answers. It's nothing like school. It's just a little bit of fun. And it's where you can look at um, different ways of thinking about things. That's I think that's the biggest thing that the questions do. It makes you think um, or invites you to maybe think in a different way. And um, But you can play with it. It really is a game and you can complete it. You can get family, friends to complete it. You can get colleagues and, and your peers and, and your subordinates. And you know, you can um, really have a lot of fun with it. There is no right or wrong answer. And I have stood, when I've done um, these things as a consultant, I have stood behind employees and watched them complete it. And they've been doing it honestly. And then they notice that on the right hand side, as you're looking at it, there is a color change going on. And as soon as they realize that, it sets up an alert system and they sometimes Sometimes go in and try and change their answers because the colour system is a bit like a set of traffic lights, red, amber and green. And the red um, on this diagnostic, um, it, it means kind of alert or, or to draw your eye to it. Oh, that's interesting. I've got a red. You know, why? Why did I get that? Amber is like a warning sign. You know, consider some of this and, and maybe look at some of your behaviours and how you think. And your awareness, of course, of others and see if you can help yourself be more centred, more aware, more mindful, more present in the moment. Um, and all those things that contribute to emotional intelligence. And then there's the smiley green. And when you get green you kind of uh, pat yourself on the back and say well done and, and what I've seen people do is go back into the diagnostic and try and change their answers so they get a sea of green well number one all we're doing is kidding ourselves but the other thing too 
is the more emotionally intelligent aware you become, actually the more you see a void and a gap and, and opportunities for growth. So at, if you went on and completed this diagnostic, let's say every three months, then after a year you'll probably find you have fewer greens than you had when you first started. And all that shows is a heightened level of emotional intelligence because you are becoming more and more aware of opportunities for growth and, and things where you perhaps couldn't have been aware as you might have been and you've learned to fill that gap which is absolutely fantastic so it's not finger pointing at all it's facilitative it's great fun and I'm going to run through some of the questions now today so I'll go um, through some of them going into the break and then after the break I'll pick up on the rest of them so the first question is I'm usually aware of my feelings from moment to moment as they happen to change and you know this is a huge aspect of emotional intelligence and awareness and when you read this question you'll be given an opportunity to click a drop down box and in that drop down box it will help you answer um, correctly and um, but what you're actually given once you click the answer is a number and the measurement is based basically minus five to plus five. And it's a great way to measure anything. If you say to somebody on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel today? Yes, you'll get an answer. But if you say on a scale of minus five to plus five, zero being I don't know or neutral, then you will get a much more accurate answer. And I can tell you from experience, it's a great one to do with the children. Anyway, so that's question one. The next question, I bounce back quickly from daily setbacks or upsets. And this is about getting back into flow, getting back into your balance. And the quicker you can do it, the more effective you are. And actually, the more influential you are. The person who is most... Um, uh, the most uh, what's the word buoyant if that's the right word most flexible actually has the most power when people share their problems with me I have the ability to put myself into their shoes well of course that is empathy and understanding and seeing it from the other person's point of view I deal calmly with stress <laughs> many of you will laugh when you read that one and sometimes we we um have a, 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 a cockeyed view of this so it's quite a good one to ask your colleagues or your family because you might say yes I do and they go you must be joking or the other way around of course I'm considered to be an optimistic person even in the face of setbacks now this is about future proofing this is about inspiring hope because we are unsure of the future students don't know what they're coming out to 65% of jobs don't exist yet or you know 65% um, of students just really have no idea what they're going to be going into and the whole purpose of this program for students is to give them tools so that when they have setbacks um, they remain optimistic because they have tools in their toolbox they have little um, things that they can bring out of their back, back pocket which will help them navigate so in other words they can say I don't know I'm uncertain about this that and the other but I know I'm going to be okay because I will be able to problem solve effectively and that's what this is all about when I'm grumpy or in a bad mood I make a strong effort to get out of it as quickly as I can well, I'll leave that one on the table, I think. I accurately read other moods or non-verbal cues. So this is about body language. This is about tone and intonation. And um, I think it's, yes, it's about reading other people, but it's also about being aware of ourselves. How often have we walked back and said, I don't know what's the matter with him. I don't know what's, what the matter is with her. I only asked them if they were okay. And anybody with any sense of emotional intelligence would either say to you or quietly think, yes, but how did you say it? And where were you? Did you interrupt them? Were they just about to, for example, do an Olympic dive off of the board and then you go in and ask them something and then get you know, a, a, an odd reaction? So it's turn intonation, but it's also choosing the scenery, choosing the sign, cho uh, the, the setup, if you like, and also choosing our words and our choice of words where we emphasize the words, you know, did you um, empty the dishwasher? Did you empty the dishwasher? Did you empty the dishwasher? Did you empty the dishwasher? All of them change meaning depending on which word we lean on. And lastly, going into the break, I'm known as someone who has a passion for a purpose that goes beyond status and money. This is where we try and work to the answer of, yes, I am known as a purpose, person with purpose beyond money and status.
EQ, Emotional Quotient, is better known as Emotional Intelligence. It is a tangible tool that can sit alongside your services or your product, and it can be taught. Leaders with high EQ have less stress, they're more effective, and they earn more money. There's a great saying, just because we have pains, it does not give us permission to be a pain. <laughs> I believe that teaching emotional intelligence has a direct impact on your sense of success and your net profits. EQ will empower you and your workforce to drive the change that you want. Change brings transition. EQ can help unpack what's holding you back and speed up that period of transition.